Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. There was an unexpected and kind of amazing moment at the White House today. Kanye West, the rapper, showed up in the Oval Office and proceeded to give what amounted to effectively a campaign speech while sitting directly across from the President of the United States and while pounding on the presidential desk. You've likely already seen pictures of what happened. It's everywhere. And the scene may have confused you. You might have concluded it was a publicity stunt staged by famous people in order to become more famous. You may have found yourself muttering about the debased and celebrity-centered focus of our public discourse these days. You may even have felt a little sad knowing that the dignified country you grew up in is gone for good. You can be forgiven for reaching those conclusions, but they're not the whole story of what happened today. Believe it or not, Kanye West said some genuinely interesting things this afternoon, things we ought to be talking about in public but are not. He'll probably destroy his career for saying them. He'll certainly be despised by many of his former friends. But before any of that happens, let's consider what he actually said. We'll go with the most offensive things first. Here they are. You know, people expect that if you're black, you have to be Democrat. I have a, uh, I've, I've had conversations that basically said that welfare is the reason why a lot of black people end up being Democrat. They say, you know, first of all, it's, it, it's a limit to amount of jobs. Uh, so the, the fathers lose the jobs and they say, we'll give you more money for having more kids in your home. I think it's the bravery that helps you beat this game called life. You know, they try to scare me to not wear this hat, my own friends, but this hat, it gives me, it gives me power in a way. You know, my dad and my mom separated, so I didn't have a lot of male energy in my home. You know, I love Hillary, I love everyone, right? But the campaign, I'm with her, just didn't make me feel as a guy that didn't get to see my dad all the time, like a guy that could play catch with his son. She didn't make me feel like a guy who could play catch with his son. West didn't explain exactly what he meant by that, and yet at the very same time, he could not have put it more precisely or more poignantly. He grew up in a party whose policies have systematically destroyed the American family, especially in poor neighborhoods. I didn't have a lot of male energy in my home, West said with obvious sadness. Millions of American kids know exactly what he is talking about. The Democratic Party won't acknowledge these kids or their loss. To party leaders, fathers in the home are at best irrelevant. At worst, they're an impediment to political power. Married women tend to vote Republican, and they know that. When prominent Democrats attack the patriarchy, what they're attacking is fathers. When they wage war on toxic masculinity, what they're trying to suppress is masculinity itself. Everybody knows this. Few are brave enough to say it out loud. West essentially did, and then he kept going. Watch this. So, and uh, that's a move, one of the moves that I love that liberals try to do, the liberal would try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. So when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, oh, but he's racist. You think racism can control me? Oh, that don't stop me, that's an invisible wall. You think racism can control me? It's an invisible wall. The reporters looking on seem stunned, even betrayed. And then just to rub it in, Wes went on to defend the Bill of Rights. Watch. What about gun violence with all the debate about the Second Amendment going on? The problem is illegal gun? guns. Illegal guns is the problem. Not, not, not legal guns. We have the right to bear arms. What do we make of all of this? Well, obviously, just from watching, you can tell that Kanye West is an eccentric guy. He meanders. He talks like someone who's never had to filter his thoughts, which he probably never has had to do. But much like someone else who comes to mind, Wes may be precisely crazy enough to think for himself. And that's a valuable quality right now. No consultant advised him to say any of that. Clearly, nobody controls him. Sometimes he doesn't control himself. But listen carefully to what he said. Sprinkled throughout his ramblings are flashes of truth real insights into the way the world actually is, rather than the way they tell us it is. Nobody else is allowed to talk this way. Go ahead and try it at work. You'll get fired. West doesn't care, and that makes him dangerous to a system that is based almost entirely on piety and lying. If you're benefiting from a system like that, Kanye West must be crushed. Here's the math of it. The Democratic presidential candidates, everyone who runs, needs to get almost the entire black vote in order to win a national election. 
That's not easy to do, so in order to do it, Democrats sow racial division. They pit Americans against each other based on their ethnicity. You can't support them. They're the wrong color. You hear that all the time. It's now the essential Democratic argument. It's destructive, but more ominously for Democrats, it may no longer be working. A poll by Public Broadcasting just last week found that Trump's approval rating with Hispanic voters is 41 percent. That's higher than it is with college-educated white voters. If anything like that ever happened among African-American voters, the game would be over. So that can't happen. Kanye West must be destroyed. And so the thought police swooped in almost immediately to arrest this disobedient artist and declare him incompetent. Wow. Okay, I'm doing this for everybody who's watching us who turned their volume down. You can put it back up again. That but was if you think you're bonkers. going to get uh, uh, a thoughtful play-by-play -play and political analysis, you're not. Because that was an assault on our White House. It was a combination of stream of consciousness. I felt like I was sitting in on a psychiatric visit and a commercial for Donald Trump. What I saw was a minstrel show today. Him in front of all of these white people, mostly white people, embarrassing himself and embarrassing Americans, but mostly African Americans. Yeah, shut up, Kanye. You're crazy. Keep in mind, this is coming from the same people who believe Hillary Clinton is entirely well, indeed a serious person. They're hoping this works, this crazy stuff, and that you believe them. And just in case you don't, they want to remind you that Kanye West is a race traitor, as Don Lemon just said, who has a low IQ. Here was CNN on Tuesday night. Kanye West is what happens when Negroes don't read. Um, and, and we have this now, and now Donald Trump is going to use it and pervert it, and he's going to have somebody who can stand with him and take pictures. <laughs> Kanye, because he's put on a MAGA hat, and he's an attention whore like the president, he's all of a sudden now the, the, the model spokesperson. He's, he's the token Negro of the, of the Trump administration. Got that? He can't read because he's the N-word. That's what the liberals on a liberal cable channel are now telling you. But they have no choice. They are terrified you will listen to what Kanye West is saying, and that's not allowed. Jason Nichols is a professor of African American Studies at the University of Maryland, someone who's followed Kanye West closely for years. He joins us tonight. So is it okay to say that you're the N-word and you can't read? Like, is, is that... I, I, I don't even... Well, hold is that on, allowed? Tucker, Tucker, he didn't say that he couldn't read. He said that he doesn't read. Well, he's dumb. He's dumb because he's the N-word. No, and, he, and, and he, he, call, he did not call him the N-word. He did. He said Negro, which is different. It's an antiquated term, but it's not the N-word. Look, if you said that, if there was a meeting of black leaders with anybody and you said something like that, which I would never do because it's I disgusting. Sure hope not. I never would. Sure hope not. But if you ever did say something like that, you'd lose your job so fast to make your head spin. Well, again, so like, what is this? Is this okay? No, but hold on. You know exactly what's going on. Kanye West, like, I don't know anything about Kanye West. You do. I do. So I'm not an expert on the subject, but I know that you should be allowed to have an opinion that's different from the mob's opinion. The group think the, isn't the manned. No, truly. The mob on cable news. Like, it's okay to have a different view. It's all right if one guy disagrees. Okay? Again, I, And they use racial epithets and call them well, stupid and crazy? Like, wh wh what is this? Well, number one, in, in terms of calling people stupid and crazy, that's something that the president has done several times okay. to well, lots of African-Americans. Are we for that now? So, so, I mean, no, no, but hold on. Like, what, has what done kind of, the exact okay, same thing. Okay, so but, let's, so, but I thought but, we were against that. I mean, they're attacking him on the basis of his race because but call it he's out. deviating from the, from the group. But Tucker... Call it out from your president, Kanye West, you know, and... and Kanye, what, what, what does the Picard president have to do with it? I'm just saying I'm Picard watching Don says, Lemon, but hold on. Don I mean, Lemon, you know, come on. I don't know. It's a major... Well, is that okay? I guess that's that's what... Look, I don't think well, it's okay I, I, when anybody does it. I don't care what color well, or party. I, I'm not into this. it. My, my view on Kanye West is this. I have lots of sympathy and empathy for him. He and I actually have a lot in common. We both lost our mothers around the same time. I know how that's a stabilizing force in your family and how and I think he does suffer from some mental illness as he was diagnosed with bipolar even okay. though he tried to undiagnose himself but I thought I thought a lot we of his, well, his ramblings on. I were, un, we were, were incoherent okay they were and incoherent. that's what people are pointing out okay there but some yeah, yeah. I, I agree some were incoherent but some were totally coherent yeah, he said he, look he the Democratic Party's policies have wrecked the black family. That's true. That's incorrect. Right? Okay, but that's okay, we, we can argue. Look, there's a lot of social scientists. We can have a separate. Sure. But, but that's an actual position that people who study it for the course of their lifetimes believe. That's not a crazy perspective. 
A lot of people think that. I it's, think that. I'm not crazy. Yeah, no, you're not. But I think that. So it, it why is, is it over the line when he says that? Well, I think a lot of people are also disappointed. Why? And I think they're disappointed because Kanye held certain positions early on in his career that he was almost like a folk hero in the, in the African American I remember. community, particularly in, in the hip hop community. When he called George W. Bush racist, but you're allowed to change your views. I've changed my views on almost everything because America's changed. So don't we want that? See, what this is, is not, I don't care about Kanye West. And I don't actually care about any political party. What I care about is the freedom to think for yourself and to tell the truth as you see it. Yeah, and he has, and, he has. But why are we platform. attacking him for that? Well, no, I mean, we actually, you on this show every night, as you've, you've said, I have the right to have an opinion upon people that voice well, their opinion. I totally agree, but I'm just saying and so we're attacking this guy as crazy and an N-word who can't read and stupid and he's like a traitor to his race because he's got a view that's different from the majority. Like, that's a fascist position. Like, we should not We should encourage people to think for themselves, shouldn't we? No, we, we absolutely should, but what they're trying to say, and I think what, he, what Bakari Sellers meant by... Uh, him not be him not reading not that he couldn't read but that him not reading is that he didn't have an understanding of some of the things that he talks about he doesn't he hasn't actually I mean, he's read saying and thought he's these saying that he, rather than rebut it and say well, you know here's the information i have that shows that welfare has not hurt the black family it's actually strengthened it okay show me the info it's like you're crazy you're stupid you're a traitor to your race it's like you can't have an honest conversation when well, people well i mean are e even some like of the that. things that he said you know uh, when he talked about welfare today he yeah. talked about, uh, you know, things that hadn't been in place since 19. Yeah, well, he's not a policy expert, but like, I don't know. It's just this weird. You, know, you don't get thing. more money for having more children. That's that's been phased out. That was phased out with TANF okay. Okay. by I'm Bill sure. Clinton, I, I, and he's still stating it, which okay. means that okay. he is not up on the issues well, that he's that there, he's There's one issue. You, ha you have a famous person who's not a policy person, but like he's thinking for himself, and that's but, not but allowed. But the president yeah. brings him in to talk yeah. policy. But I want that's I'm, troubling. Yeah, I guess. Br bring in some guys no, who actually brought him in know for, those He brought things. him in to illustrate how totally intolerant the left is, and he succeeded. No, I I, I, as I said, <laughs> All I, right. I love Kanye. I, I want him to actually Good. Do you get want himself to together. Yeah. No? No? I okay, we got to go. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Good Thank you very you. much, Tucker. Well, the rage against Kanye West wasn't simply on television. It was all over Twitter. Tariq Nasheed said this. Kanye West is exactly how people who benefit from the system of white supremacy like to see black men groveling, buck dancing. I can't even read that. It's such crap. And it's so mean, too, by the way. Uh, someone else called S Samuel Singawane added, quote, Kanye is that one black friend every white racist person talks. You know what? I'm going to stop reading this because it's too nasty and go right to our guest. Christopher Harris is executive director of Unhyphenated America. He joins us tonight. I just want to be clear, Mr. Harris. I'm, I, I, I've never met Kanye West. I never will. But I just think it's too mean to attack a guy just because he agrees with you on, like, that personal basis that you're a traitor to your race. Like, who talks like that? Well, the left talks like that, Tucker. I mean, uh, you know, you look at Donna Brazile recently, just what she, you know, one of those nasty tweets, she tweeted out that Kanye West has set black folks back 155 years. I mean, isn't that amazing? One individual who has an opinion that's different from the, the black collective somehow is, is, is going to set black folks back into the slavery years? I, I guess they're expecting at any moment now plantations are just going to pop up all over America. But, you know, if that were to happen, it would be Democrats trying to put us back on the plantations that they but own. But does it help? I mean, does does it help anybody, individuals or a large group of people, when you tell them you're not allowed to think for yourself, you have to take orders, and anyone who has a different thought should be punished? I mean, it's hard to succeed in life if you're not having independent thoughts, isn't it? Or maybe it's not. Well, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the left is anything, uh, is nothing if not hypocritical. I mean, we, let's jump out to Hollywood. Let's talk about Alyssa Milano. You know, a few months back, she talked about having a mental illness. What's the difference between Alyssa Milano and Kanye West? Well, one, I mean, you know, Alyssa Milano is a D-list actress, and Kanye is a, is a musical genius and hip-hop superstar. Uh, but they both have a mental illness. So are we now, like, is it okay to attack people for having a mental illness if they hate Donald Trump? I mean, is, is that I what don't it know. Is, I mean, look, I'm not a shrink. Like I can't it's, assess. It's, he seems like an eccentric guy to me. So are half of my friends. I mean, but that's not the yeah. point. The point is, shouldn't you assess what people say on its own terms? Well, if I make a well, claim and you attack my family, you're not really addressing the claim, are you? Well, see, and, and that's what happens with the left all the time. Uh, they don't have a leg to stand on. What Kanye is talking about is the fact that, listen, regardless of the color of your skin, 
things are better for people in America. People of different ethnicities are more economically free today than they were before. And ask yourself, what can you not do today in America as a black person uh, that you could do when Obama was president? Nothing. In fact, there's yeah. more black businesses starting. Uh, people, are, their, their families are strengthening. People go around and they're talking like, hey, you know, things are actually getting better. And I, I want to point out one thing real quick, Tucker. Yeah, did well, you notice that? Time, you notice that they had Jim Brown in there right next to, to, uh, to Kanye West, but you notice they're, they're too scared to talk about Jim Brown, but they'll try to go after Kanye West. Yeah, I mean, I'm just for freedom of thought. That's it, you know, independent of any individual. Um, but Christopher, thank you very much. Nice to see thank you. Thank you, Tucker. Amazingly, we're less than four weeks away from Election Day. So we're going to take a close look at some of the candidates in some of the country's closest races. Our first such investigation is after this break. We hope you'll stick with us. Well, the midterm elections are just 26 days from now. Kind of amazing. Too much going on to digest. So as we move closer to Election Day, we're going to take a closer look at particular races and the candidates running in them. Tonight, we want to tell you about Kirsten Cinema. She's running as a Democrat to replace Jeff Flake in the U.S. Senate in Arizona. Illegal immigration has long been a, an important issue in that state, which shares a long and largely undefended border with Mexico. Cinema in this race has tried to portray herself as a moderate on that question, someone who supports both amnesty for legal aliens, but also more robust border security. There is growing evidence, though, that she is not a moderate, at least by American standards. In 2006, Cinema declared that illegal aliens who die trying to sneak into our country are morally equivalent to Americans dying in the Iraq War. Here's part of the quote. To state that immigration is not a war or is not equal in magnitude to war, I believe dishonors those who have died in this country and others as migrants. The deaths that people suffer in the Mexico-Arizona desert are the same as the deaths that people suffer in the Iraq desert. They are needless, senseless deaths. Now, that's not a mainstream position, even now in the middle of the revolution we're going through. Three years after she said that, Cinema described her position on immigration laws this way, quote, I oppose all of them. So if you think that foreigners breaking your country's laws are every bit as good as the citizens dying to defend them, it's possible you may have a problem with your own people, your own countrymen, the citizens of your nation. And cinema se certainly seems to have a problem with them. Here she is in 2011. Over the past several years, people would watch what was happening in Arizona and be like, Dan, those people are crazy. <laughs> is it something about the water? No, the water's fine. We stole it from Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the water. <laughs> they just, they're called Republicans. Charlie Hurd is the opinion editor at the Washington Times and a very smart man, if we can say, joins us tonight. Charlie, things have changed so much that this is not disqualifying, saying that the deaths of illegal aliens in the desert trying to break our laws are morally equivalent to the deaths of our soldiers fighting in Iraq. Three years ago, it would have been over. Does this hurt her at all, do you think? I certainly hope it does, but uh, you raise a very good point. And what we've seen, you know, everybody talks about the, what the Tea Party has done to the Republican Party. And I, I think there was some very healthy stuff there in terms of uh, forcing Republicans to sort of get back to some of their principles. Uh, but my goodness, what we're seeing happen to the Democratic Party, a once legitimate party that, yes. that we relied on to keep the Republicans honest and to, or, the, or the supposedly conservative party honest and to challenge them. They're getting dragged so far to the left, off the cliff, that I don't know. I, that certainly would not hurt her in a, in a Democratic primary in any way whatsoever. I do think that it might uh, hurt her in a general election. I mean, it, you know, a lot of what she said there, it's kind of hard not to conclude that she hates America. And if you hate our borders and you hate our, our, the laws uh, enforcing our borders, then you kind of, by definition, hate America. And, uh, and, and that seems to be the campaign she's running uh, on. And, uh, and then especially if, if you, you, know, you, you think about running against somebody like Martha McSally, who is a, a, at the very least has served her country. A career military and, yeah, officer. And, and, uh, and who's made a joke of the fact that uh, Cinema brags about having 100 pairs of shoes and uh, uh, McSally uh, brags about 100 combat mi uh, missions. Whether you agree with those foreign wars or not, right. and I have a real problem with them, whether you agree with them or not, the idea that you would compare the, the sacrifices that our men and women have made in, uh, you know, following the orders of, of the military to illegals crossing the border and dying, uh, trying to uh, break our laws and get into the country, it's astonishing. It's pretty decadent, and it shows you how much Arizona has changed because of 
Absolutely. immigration that she has a shot. Charlie Hurt, thank you, as always. I hope you come you. back on this stuff. Well, the battle over Brett Kavanaugh is over, but the left has not moved on. The View, the TV show that ABC keeps on the air, says that no proof is needed to call Kavanaugh a racist. This is the opinion of their in-house lawyer. Plus, supposing literally all immigration laws likely will not endear you uh, to normal people. Kirsten Cinema seems to be uh, proud of it, though, and that puts her perfectly in step with the consensus in Washington, D.C. That's the subject of a brand new book called Ship Fools, which you can buy pretty much anywhere. We'll be right back. Brett Kavanaugh has been sworn in, is now ensconced on the Supreme Court, but the left's anger over that is not even close to ending. Pretty soon it'll be so bad we'll need the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to investigate it. Today on The View, to name one example, a person identified as a legal analyst called Sonny Hostin proclaimed that when it comes to sexual assault, due process plays no role. Watch this. After 40 years, we finally changed the law. We finally said a woman's word is enough. I've taken many cases to trial with just a woman's word. Uh, every, every single woman needs to be heard because more often than not, women are correct. But Sonny, you are, you are insinuating that evidence doesn't matter. And as a lawyer, evidence should always Testimony matter. Testimony is, is evidence. You don't need corroborating evidence. You don't need a rape kit. You don't need, you don't need witnesses because oftentimes, There's guess what? There? there are no witnesses during rape. So, so when you're talking about evidence, testimonial evidence is but the very best of you in the system. Alan Dershowitz spent decades teaching at Harvard Law School. He knows something about due process. He's the author of the book, The Case Against Impeaching Trump, and he joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. So you just heard a very specific legal claim that it is now the law in the United States that, and I'm quoting, a woman's word is enough. That's it. Is that true? Technically, it is true. The law was changed some years ago, and I think it was a good change that you don't need corroboration to make a case. So that if a woman who was raped immediately goes to the hospital, gets a rape kit, uh, identifies her assailant, knew her assailant previously, certainly her word would be enough. But if it's you know 35 years old, if her main witness said no, uh, she wasn't there, if there are inconsistencies in the story, then obviously the testimony of the woman, though technically sufficient, would not be enough to convince any reasonable fact finder beyond a reasonable doubt. Just think of the case today, Harvey Weinstein, I consulted briefly on one of the email issues in that case, had the main accuser's accusation against him dismissed today because evidence came out that a detective suppressed that the main accuser had told a friend that she had willingly and voluntarily engaged in oral sex with Harvey Weinstein in order to be cast in a role, having previously sworn under oath, presumably, that he forced her to have sex. So women do lie. Women lie for uh, economic reasons. I agree that most women tell the truth, but most isn't enough to convict somebody. You need proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So technically, Sonny Hoskins, who's a good lawyer, is correct. But practically, if you have elements that cast doubt on the word of the woman, then corroboration certainly helps strengthen the case. So you're allowed to doubt a woman's word. That's still legal. Is this a sex selective <laughs> question? Is it do we believe women more than we believe men? First of all, not only are you allowed, but if you're on a jury, you are obliged to presume the innocence of the defendant, which means you cannot presume that the witness is telling the truth. You have to look at the totality of the right. circumstances. Look, we know, we've seen case after case where women have told the truth and have been assaulted and men have gotten right. away with it, but we've seen case after case where women, for their own reasons, have lied, the Virginia case, the, the case in, in this other cases. We've seen case after case. Right. And, and so we don't start with a presumption that there's a genetically linked characteristic for you truth don't. Okay, the line. Good. We were getting pretty, you're starting to make me a little nervous. Professor, thank you for clarifying that. It was, I appreciate it was something that. we wanted clarified. Thank you. Well, in a case of peak irony, 
The Obama administration had a secret plan of attack in 2016 if Donald Trump refused to accept the election results. They were worried he wouldn't accept the election results. Of course, the left still doesn't accept the 2016 election results because that would require accepting a lot of uncomfortable truths about their leadership over the past 20 years. There's a book about this. It's on the screen. We'll be right back. A new report from New York Magazine reveals that the Obama administration had a secret plan in place prior to the 2016 election. They feared that President Trump, if he lost, would not accept the results of that election. And so the administration plotted with several Republicans to, quote, validate the results and ensure an orderly transition of power. They also had another plan in case then-candidate Trump disputed the results. They were going to whip out members of the so-called intelligence community to claim that Russia had weighed in on his behalf and therefore make his claims to victory seem less legitimate. Of course, in the end, he won, but they kept telling that story anyway. Russia, Russia, Russia. The point is, they've been planning that for a long time. Author and columnist Mark Stein joins us tonight to assess what this means. Mark, great to see you. So we learned hey, that the you, whole Trump campaign wasn't legitimate because really Putin was running it. This was mm. a storyline that was already like ready to go before anyone voted. Yes, I think what they're trying to do here, Tucker, is to reverse engineer an explanation as to why the governing party was investigating its political opponent, which is, of course, you know, classic. Uh, banana republic stuff and as you say the russia collusion stuff was baked into the pie uh back in 2016 it isn't going anywhere so they've now added this new wrinkle to it which is that they were fearful uh that trump as the big loser would not accept the result of the election uh, in fact, I think this is nonsense. Uh, they weren't worried about Trump losing. They were worried about him winning. But the point is they're trying to construct a narrative that explains why uh, the ruling party were investigating the opposition. But I wonder, I mean, what would that have looked like? Republics. So, I mean, how hmm. radical would Trump have gotten if he had lost? Would he have, say, written a book blaming everyone else but himself for his loss? Would he traveled the country <laughs> for two years giving speeches, again, calling everyone who was against him a racist and calling the country stupid? Yes. Would he have gone that far? Yes. Yes, I think he'd have uh, uh, worn ill-fitting uh, pantsuits and gone on a tour of uh, Montreal, Toronto, and Oxford University, because that's what the... Uh, the that's uh, that's what losing candidates seem to do. In fact, the, you know, the people who do complain about losing the election are Democrats. If you recall, in 2000, uh, Al Gore, late at night, called up uh, George W. Bush and said he was asking for a recount. And Bush said, uh, you mean you're uh, retracting your concession? And Al Gore famously replied, there's no need to get snippy. Uh, Democrats are the ones uh, who have actually... Uh, contested the results of the election. Um, there's not a lot of evidence that Donald Trump was doing that. Uh, he was just having a joke, as is his want. And what's actually disturbing exactly. to me, because this is another sign of totalitarian societies, is when Trump makes an obvious joke like, hey, hey, Vladimir Putin, if you're watching, maybe you could uh, cough up those emails of Hillary's you've got. When he makes an obvious joke, uh, intelligence agencies then say, oh, we need to investigate Trump's joke. That's actually what they did behind the Iron Curtain, yes. and it's a bit disturbing that it's now happening on this side of the Iron Curtain. Whatever they're accusing you of doing is exactly what they're mm. doing themselves. I mean, that, that turns out to be the yes. one true rule about their behavior. Yeah. Mark Stein, it's always great to see you. Thank you for explaining that. Thanks a lot, Tucker. Oh, final exam up ahead. Can you beat our experts at remembering what happened last week? One of the great pairings of all time after the break. Well, you've waited all week. It's time now for final exam where the best informed people in the news business sit across one another at a set to determine who's the best informed person in the news business. This week's contestants, Fox correspondent Kristen Fisher and the host of Special Report, Brett Baer. 
Now, pressure. you know, I, you never miss an episode, so of course you know the rules, but for our viewers just tuning in, I'm going to repeat them. This is old hat for you. And some buzzers. I ask the questions. The first one to buzz in gets to answer the question. You must wait until I finish asking the question in order to answer it. You can answer once I acknowledge you by saying your name. Each correct answer is worth one point. Every incorrect detracts a point. Best of five wins. Does that make sense? Makes yes. Sense. Outstanding. We're ready. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen. Question one. The art world was stunned this week when a painting by the graffiti artist Banksy was sold at auction. Something very odd happened. Once the gavel came down, what was it? Brett Bear. No one bid. No one bid. Did no one bid on the famous graffiti artist Banksy? To the tape. Seven for $8, This work of art, now it's been shredded, they believe it actually adds about 50% more to the value. Uh, <laughs> That's actually quite a brilliant prank. That was the rest of the answer. A prank, but it, that was a Because <laughs> it's not right. a decadent art world or anything. All right, question two. You know what? That says something good about both of you, that you're not watching art auctions during yeah. the day. Hey. You've got sure. work to do. All right, this is a multiple choice question number two. Singer Taylor Swift has become political, as you know. She is urging her fans to vote against Tennessee Republican Marsha Blackburn next month. The president responded to this news by saying of Swift, one of three things. Was it A, Taylor Swift is overrated, B, I like her music less now, or C, lock her up? Kristen Fisher. B. He oh. likes it 25% less. I thought I it was lock her up. We'll find out. To the tape, please. Marsha Blackburn is doing a very good job in Tennessee. I'm sure Taylor Swift has nothing or no, doesn't know anything about her. And uh, let's say that I like Taylor's music about 25% less now, okay? It's nice. <laughs> Good effort. Good effort. Watching all of those, all those tapes, finally, finally. Roughly 25% less. Fantastic. All right. Question three, also taken from the world of pop culture. Kanye West under fire today for showing all of America his iPhone's passcode while on live television. Well, he met with the president in the White House. Kanye took out his phone and hit the same number six times in order to unlock it. What very unsecure number was it? Brett Baer. Zero. Now, I don't know how many zeros it was. I think it was zero, 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 zero. But all zeros? Zeros. Was it all zeros? And what we want to start with is, uh, I, I, I brought a, I brought a... <laughs> Wow. Not exactly secure. Wow. Six zeros. Our judges say, that's enough zeros. What we might be looking at is the comeback story of, of, the, of the week. I know. One to zero. I One feel to really zero. That's right. You are back to, <laughs> back to stasis. Goose egg. <laughs> Question four. Starting this week, which former American president will come to life in the form of a 3D hologram here in Washington? Kristen Fisher. Reagan. Reagan? Reagan. An airport now a hologram? At Is his library. Ronald Reagan. Every four years, almost every Republican presidential hopeful invokes the spirit of President Reagan. Now at his library, that spirit has become a virtual reality. Three holograms of President Not Reagan sure. will make their first this public appearance <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Not sure this is connecting. You know, it's not connecting. You know, you, you guys should have holograms for in here, you know? That way you don't... You take don't. more time we, off. You know what? Let's get that in our contract, shall we? <laughs> you can have a Friday off. <laughs> Final question. This one, also multiple choice. Frontier Airlines, the airline of the West, kicked off an Orlando woman from one of its flights this week after she boarded the plane with a prohibited, prohibited animal. This multiple choice. What kind of animal was it? Was it A, a python? Oh, 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 oh no, no. Oh, 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 foul. Oh, Kristen. Ten yards. Yes, sure. And the ball. Oh. Kristen loses a point Just and it like goes that? to Brett. Oh dear. Oh. I could get the right answer. Well, Do you I get can another? Tie it up, in which case we need a tiebreaker. Wow. I, that see, that's what I know. Trust are me. Horribly unfair. I, that's right. They're unfair, but those are the rules. You're it's right. like the Electoral College. It's in the Constitution, Kristen what Fisher. You, <laughs> you can't change it. Okay, so Here Brett. It is. Did she refuse to fly without A, a python, B, a squirrel, or C, a raccoon? A squirrel. Was it B, a squirrel? 
A woman was kicked off a flight after bringing an emotional support squirrel onto the plane. <laughs> Frontier Airlines okay. only allows dogs or cats. Is Not unusual. Or is, you know, I, I have been, been robbed. We we are, I must say it was self larceny. <laughs> it was. I said it's it's multiple choice, know, and you knew the answer, and you got so excited. I got here. Okay, so like the script says that's it for this week. Exactly. Okay, so we have to go to the tiebreaker. We always have the same tiebreaking question. Okay. And if you watch the show before, you know it. So it's I a don't. test of that too. Yes, you do. I know. I some buzzers. Ready? Here's the tiebreaker. What is the capital of Burkina Faso, the African nation, Burkina Faso? Seriously, this is the question. This is seriously you, the question. Every time. Has anybody ever gotten it? No. Well, I don't think it's going to happen tonight either. I don't have it. It's Wagadugu. See, I was going to go with you. were going to go with Wagadugu. Wagadugu. I was just not sure. You know what? Our judges are saying in. This oh. rare instance is never before in seen. Oh, wait, they're saying we have one more question. What is the capital of Madagascar? Uh, Madagascar. The Madagascar, capital. right. Oh. Not is, could you just Google that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, our, I have our, two our judges are saying that just... no reasonably informed person should have to know either one of those answers. Therefore, for the first time in the history of the show, we have a split decision. We have an Actual tie in which both of you get a medal, both of you claim the victory, both of you go home proud. Wow, you know, this is quite the millennial. It really is. <laughs> it's 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 win. We only have one trouble. Eric Wemple nice. mug, but this also, and they're saying this to me now, this requires at some point in the next 12 months you must come back for a rematch. Fantastic. We Fair and enough? We will, we will we'll share. share a cup of coffee. Amazing. Look at this. Our news division is so good they can't even beat each other. <laughs> so good we don't even know the we capital see of you Madagascar. Back. <laughs> and Brett, yeah, thank you. Capitals. That's it for final exam. Pay attention to the news every week. Tune in every Thursday to see if you can top the experts. Not likely, but you can try. We'll be right back. Well, for the moment, the First Amendment still resides in the Bill of Rights. The left has to look for other, more creative means to silence views it disagrees with. A new motion passed unanimously by the City Council of Los Angeles requires all contractors with the city to disclose publicly any ties they have to the NRA. The message is very clear. We control what you think. Ethan Behrman is a radio show host in the state of California, and he joins us tonight. So, Ethan, are you now or have you ever been a member of the NRA? Have you ever had contact with anyone who is knowingly or unknowingly before we proceed? Uh, I have not been a member, and I know lots of people who are members of the NRA. Okay, so obviously that shouldn't, be, that shouldn't be allowed. They shouldn't be able to do business with the city of Los Angeles, which collects tax money from everybody, but only people who conform to certain ideological standards should be able to do business with Los Angeles. I'm sure you agree with that, right? Well, actually, I just disclosed mine, so I guess I should be able to get a contract with the city. That's all they're requiring is dis disclosure, especially in light of the fact that the Trump administration uh, issued the rules to the, or excuse me, pushed the IRS to, to have the new rules that say, hey, dark money is great. I would think, Tucker, you would be behind exposing dark money so we can know who is actually contributing to different No, groups. this is a voluntary association. So, for example, I took riflery certifications from the NRA in summer camp in about 1978 in the state of California in fact would that disqualify me no as long as you disclose it that's all the city of Los Angeles is asking oh, this is a big issue so we have we have gun crime problems in the United States obviously you've talked about it on your show um, and the city of Los Angeles is trying to address this. We in California are finding that the NRA is doing things like blocking universal background checks or fighting against that. We see that as a reasonable step. So this is a way of putting political pressure, no question about it, on groups like the NRA. Well, to it's say, a way of hey, suppressing free some speech common sense. and punishing free association. So would, could we apply the same rules to the ACLU? The ACLU is, of course, argued on behalf of criminals for 100 years. You could easily make the case that they've increased the amount of violent crime in this country. Have you ever given money to the ACLU? If you have, we're punishing you. Would, would uh, that be a fair standard? Yeah, I think if you're being punished is something different. All they're asking well, how about, for again, how about is mandatory disclosure. disclosure. Well, how about mandatory disclosure? You give money to Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood kills people, literally kills people. Cause the leading cause of death of Americans, Planned Parenthood. Shouldn't we know? I mean, just disclosure, mandatory disclosure if you've given money to Planned Parenthood. Is that fair? 
I, I think this becomes fair game, though, right? So let's say the city oh. of wherever. Uh, uh, it does. I mean, you're, you're making the logical point, which is if you're going to require. But cities have a, but cities have a long record of this. They do things like um, if you want to have a contract with us, you know, 50 percent of the labor is going to be union labor. No, uh, I you're going to pay a minimum of $17 You can do a lot of stuff. No, no. I mean, you can make everyone yeah. wear a Viking hat if you wanted or stand on one foot or whatever. Should you? That's the question. Not, should you do this? Yes, I think in the case of Los Angeles and the state of California, it takes a very different view regarding uh, firearm laws. We have somebody who is about to become governor who's taking a very strong stance here, uh, Gavin Newsom, on these topics. And the city of Los Angeles has been very frustrated. The city attorney, Mike Fuhrer, but, has fought hard to find where these guns are coming from. So anyone who supports like the, the NRA, NRA which supports it. the Second Amendment, is punished. You don't see that. We're almost out of time, but sincerely answer my question. You don't see that as a precedent that's scary? This McCarthyite, that's everything uh, you hate? I, I I don't. I think that we're asking people to disclose who they're donating money <laughs> to. And then but to your point, that now becomes fair game. Okay. And by the way, fair game is I, I I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow on my show, Tucker. I know KGL. I can't wait, because when we did this with communists, it was the end of the world. And it was wrong, by the way. Thank you, Ethan. Great to see you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, Tucker. Well, we just want to thank you again. We asked you to put Ship of Fools to the number one spot on the New York Times bestseller list, and you did that. We had nothing to do with it. I just want to say one more time with great and complete sincerity that this show wouldn't exist and this book wouldn't be succeeding without your support. And so thank you very much for that. We appreciate it. We're going to be back tomorrow night and every weeknight going forward because we are the sworn enemy of lying, pomposity, smugness, and groupthink. And if you think pomposity, smugness, and groupthink and lying aren't omnipresent, watch the news. We'll see you tomorrow. Sean Hannity is next, live from New York. Hey, Tucker. No